Okay, so let's talk about what we're going to do in today's workshop. <clears throat> we're going to work with these ideas. The body gives form to the mind story. This is a phrase that I keep coming back to again and again in my own work as, as a somatic therapist and in the teaching that I do. Because if we start thinking of this, we start to recognize form is everywhere around us. And the form of something alters and implies the function of it. The chair is a particular shape, and the form of that uh, conditions how we use the chair. The form my body takes affects the function of my body. The stories that I make up in my mind automatically will influence the form. And that's what our exor walking exercise earlier was that way. If I take the form of this, of flexion, it influences very quickly the way I feel in my body. If I take the form of something where I have a sense of groundedness, a sense of lift and length up through my body, and I start to move really more deeply from my core than I do from my periphery, then that begins to influence the way that I feel. There's always this interaction. What happens between body and mind is always mutually interactive and mutually influential. I want you just to repeat that phrase quietly in your, inside yourself. Body and mind are always mutually interactive and mutually influential. I've not yet met anybody in the field of somatic psychotherapy that does not believe in that phrase. And yet most somatic psych psychotherapists that I meet do not act as if that's central. Because if they did, then touch would be much more taught, more widely taught. Movement would be much more widely taught. Typically in the field of somatic psychotherapy, it is somatic psychotherapy with a somatic influence. But I am looking for this. Because this is indeed our experience, where they come together. Now, I mean, I'm recognizing I'm proposing something which is complicated because it requires your education to be twice as long. And then your postgraduate education to continue to be long. So it's asking a lot. And I don't ask that of people, but I do ask people if they really are, are serious about the integration of mind and body, then you have to have the training and background to, to uh, follow that. So mind and body are mutually influential. It implies that we have to always then have an awareness of what's going on somatically and awareness, awareness of what's going on uh, psychologically and emotionally. And the ability to work back and forth between the physical and the psychological is the foundational skill of somatic psychotherapy. So what does that really mean? It means in the therapeutic process we need to track what's going on very exquisitely, what's going on in the person's body. Because little nuances of gestures imply and give information on a very deep level. So we need to track the subtlety of physical movement patterns. This, we need to track gross movement patterns, locomotion. We need to be able to track energetic patterns as they emanate from the body. We need to be able to track the psychological meanings that people give things. We need to be able to track the emotions both on a subtle level and a gross level. And we need to be able to track the interaction between the two. Okay, so this sounds like a lot, but isn't really. The technique is pretty simple. And this is what we're going to play with. The technique is fundamentally this. You have physical experience and you have, I'm going to call it mental experience, what it really is, is psychological and emotional experience. So physical and psychological emotional experience. And at some place between the two, they'll kind of merge 
is this psychophysical experience. So the task of working back and forth across this interface is basically this. You reference an inquiry into what's going on mentally or psychologically and emotionally, or you reference what's going on physically. You simply just reference it. You I, reference it either through asking questions about it or directing the person's attention into it. Now, there's, a, there's many subtle nuances in doing that, but the idea is very simple. Referencing one, referencing the other. And then there's a third component to it, which is referencing the space between the two. So, what we'll call an accessing question into this space would be something like this. Well, first of all, let's say a person presents something physical. <clears throat> I would ask the question, okay, so this thing's going on in your body. What kind of emotion goes with that? Here I'm asking the question or bringing attention over to the mental. The, the psychological and emotional. What emotion goes with that? Or what thought goes with that? Or what words go with that? Or if that could speak, what would it say? There's many different questions like that. Um, or I could do a directive, which would be something like, uh, stay with that physical sensation you have and just notice if there's a thought that arises. So it's doing the same thing, but instead of continually hammering with a question, what's that, what's that, what's that, what's that? I'm going to say, notice that, notice that. So I'll mix the two up so it doesn't feel like you're being interrogated, <laughs> basically. Okay, same thing. You have this thought, you have, or you have the feeling that um, you're afraid, you have the emotion of fear. Notice what happens in your body when you feel fear. I've simply crossed back over this interface between the two. Or the third way of bringing it together. When you have that emotion of fear, stay with it and so I'm over here. When you have that emotion of fear, stay with it and begin to notice how it connects with the physical experience and sensations you're having. So I'm bringing the two together in one inquiry. So I'm either crossing back over the interface, back and forth, or I'm coming right to the middle to the interface itself between the two and I'm having the person study what happens at that point. Okay. Are there questions about this? Yes, I'm bringing attention to the connection point, to the interface between the two. By simply asking a question, it implies both what's going on physically, what's going on psychologically, emotionally. And the way I would do that would be, I'll, I'll make another example. Let's say um, the thought is, I can't do that, whatever that is. I can't do that. That's a thought. Or let's say, it's not, it doesn't feel safe for me to do that. It's a thought. It's a belief. Okay? It doesn't feel safe for me to do that. So my inquiry could be, when you say it doesn't feel safe to do that, tune into your body and see how your body uh, participates in that feeling of unsafety. Now I've got both together at the same time. Does that make sense? Yeah. So in doing that, what I'm doing is I'm bringing attention to this idea that there's an interface between the two, and the two are connected together. It's a simple concept. There's a kind of elegance that you develop over a while in doing it. It also requires you being able to track what's going on in the body and being able to hear what's going on psychologically. Now, the value of this is as you do this, something, two very important things happen. One is you begin to access more information. And those of you that are experienced as therapists will know this, and those of you that are in graduate school that are just learning are going to find this out. 
that one of the most difficult parts of psychotherapy is to access clearly what's going on. Because once, you know, once you have, you know, some really, some experience and some skills, uh, once you really access what the core issues are, the process starts to have a life of its own and you start just, you can dance with it. The hardest part often is the client that's not aware of anything and you're not sure where to go. But once you get accessing, it deepens. So, working back and forth across the interface helps access more information. It also then helps to deepen. It helps to deepen towards what? Towards the core issues that the person's organized around. There will be core experience, central experiences in a person's life. And there will be central issues based on those experiences that the person organizes their experience around. We don't just happen as human beings. We self-organize. And we organize around these issues we call core or core material. So as we cross back and forth across the interface and we explore this, the central interface itself, what happens is automatically we're accessing more information about how the person organizes and from there we're deepening down into core material. We're in core material. That's the stuff about, around which a person creates their life interpretations, their life experiences. Once we're in core material, then we start to do the process of assessing resources. Psychophysical therapy is a resource-based model of psychotherapy. What that means is that the work is dedicated to developing, tracking and developing the resources that a person organizes around and the development of new resources that allows them to create their life in a different way. And resources are anything that support a person's growing and changing and sustaining their sense of identity in the world. Anything that sustains your sense of your sense of self or your sense of competency in yourself is a resource. So, for example, the ability to set boundaries is an important resource. Now, you might be rigid in your boundaries, so that resource will have limitations to it but it's still a resource and will help you in situations that are really difficult where you need a very strong boundary. But the missing resource might be a flexible quality of boundaries. So you get down here towards core material and the person has a great no, but they don't have a yes. And they don't have the capacity to negotiate because they don't have much of a yes, everything's just a no. So they have one part of the resource, but the resource needs to be refined. So what we do is we we process that, but then we start to build resources. The focus in this work is on building resources and to, and to be able to build resources, we need information about how a person organizes on a core level. And to get to that, what we need to do is to access and deepen, and that happens through this simple technique of working back and forth across the mind-body interface. I know that's a mouthful, but this is really very fundamental.